From humble beginnings in the founder's garage, Boxed wants to make wholesale changes to the way you shop. But in an industry dominated by a colossus of online commerce, can this bulk shopping app deliver the goods? We know the stock market's one big prediction machine, always trying to anticipate what will happen in the next six to nine months. And if you want to get a glimpse into the future, which is an essential part of being a good investor, then it helps to check in with innovative, privately held companies that are disrupting the particular industries. For example, I've spent a lot of time lately talking about how the, the rise of the stay-at-home economy, where you can order just about anything to your door as you sit around, watch Netflix, play video games, obsess over Facebook and Twitter. Well, it's making things very tough for, both, for most of these bricks and mortar operators. And I think things are about to get even tougher for these old school merchants as more and more companies perfect the stay-at-home business model. Consider the case of Boxed. It's a privately held company. No, you can't buy stock in it yet. That's taking the notion of the big box warehouse club retailer into the web. Box lets you buy essential household grocery and lifestyle products in bulk at ultra low prices. Then they deliver them to your door in just two or three days. You know, some say it's an online version of Costco, except with no membership fees, easy to use mobile app, free shipping on orders of more than 50 bucks. I think this is an idea whose time has come. Since Box doesn't need to lease retail space, only warehouse and fulfillment centers, doesn't need to pay all those cashiers and stock boys and managers, you, you need to run a physical store. That means they should almost always be able to offer you a better deal than their bricks and mortar competitors, particularly with private label. And who the heck wants to get in the car just to stock up on a mountain of paper towels or trash bags or laundry detergent? It's no wonder the company's sales are growing like crazy, up from $8 million in 2014 to more than $100 million last year. And we've got to find out more. I think it's even accelerated. So is this the future retailer? Or will they ultimately be defeated by an Amazon or maybe a Costco's newly invigorated online business? Let's check in and uh, take a closer look with Che Wong. He's the founder and CEO of Box. Learn more about his company and how it could revolutionize the warehouse club industry. Mr. Wong, welcome to Mad Money. Good Thank to see you, you sir. Thank you very much for having Have me. Have a seat. Jim. Of course, of course. All right, so oh, give the me... seat is kind of hot, so, so I'm getting ready for this. No, <laughs> no, no, no. You're privately held company. You didn't miss the quarter. Man, I'm not taking numbers down. All right, so tell me what was the core problem you were trying to solve by creating Box? Well, that's just it, right? We solved a problem that millions of other people ended up having. And so okay. that was that I lived in the Burbs, went to the Price Club every other weekend sure. with my family, moved into Manhattan, and I didn't have the physical means, aka a car, to get to a warehouse club. Right. But more importantly, over the last two or three years, we found that, folks, it's not just about physical means, but it's about time and patience as well. You mentioned millennials. Right. Uh, those millennials, you know, they, they've gotten everything delivered to them throughout their childhood. And now that they're the biggest generation in the workforce, the biggest baby producing generation in America today, I think those habits are going to continue. Well, I find them to be cheap, too. Or we <laughs> shouldn't use the word frugal, okay? They're frugal. Savvy, so, savvy. So what do you offer, say, versus an Amazon when it comes to frugality? So we offer everything in a large pack. Okay. So just like when you go, walk into Target, you won't find what they carry in a Costco. Right. And just like, you know, when you walk into a Costco, you, find, you won't find what's in a, in a Walmart. Mm -hmm. That's the same for us. So a lot of the items that we sell, you can't buy it through Amazon's first party service because it's a different size, we're a different channel, we're a wholesaler. Okay, so how do you get the word out? Because apparently the sales are accelerating pretty terrifically. Yeah, that's crazy. It, it's, it's, it was fun kind of staying under the radar, but yeah. I guess given all the change in retail, we're a little bit above the radar, we're on the radar now. And so for us, we're doing more television campaign ads. I'm here with you. We're extolling the virtues of Box all over. You'll see us like in out-of-home campaigns and, and uh, on TV more and more these days. Uh, one of the things I, I like about your company, it's got a bit of a personality and you're a bit personal. The, <laughs> and I want people to understand some of the things you do for your, uh, for your associates and also what you do for your customers that people are a little surprised by. You know, like I, I just feel like, um, you know, being in technology for so long, right. you're kind of in a bubble. Whether you're on Sand Hill Road or whether you're, you're in right. Silicon Alley, you're kind of in a bubble. But operating fulfillment centers all over the country now, you find that folks are out there just making a living off 10, 15 bucks an hour. And for us as technologists, sometimes you're not exposed to that. And after being so, it's been incumbent upon us to do something about it. So one, uh, I personally pay uh, through uh, the majority of my stock and through cash, uh, the college tuitions of, of our full-time employees' kids. Um, life-changing events are generally covered by Box as well. We can't help everyone. Sometimes we hear about a life-changing right. event and we can't cover it, but we'll at least take a look and see what we can do. Because at the end of the day, 
I don't power shareholder value. Right. It's our customers and the people that work at Box well, that really do. You know, my colleague David Faber did a, a very critical piece about Amazon, which showed that in some of the cases, very tough working conditions. Yeah. Obviously, you know about the Amazons of the world. I think that people might be drawn to shop at Box because they like the, the way you treat the people you work with. Let's bring it back to what you talked about before, Jim. It was that all these, our, all these retailers these days are under pressure. Why? It's right. because 30 years ago, for the last 30 years, value equaled price. Right. But now value equals price, convenience, and a little bit of brand. And so that's what we bring to the, to the equation. So I think if you believe that all things are equal, that you can't out-convenience someone right. once it's 30-minute delivery, you can't out-price someone because it's bottom-the-barrel price, mm -hmm. then what's left? It's brand. All right, now, obviously, uh, if you're growing like this, there could be an IPO someday. I mean, yeah. I have to believe that, that, that you do ultimately want to be able to raise money. I want to ask, you, it's great what you're doing with college, with the uh, tuition. Is there any way that the employees can get stuck? Uh, so our employees, full-time employees, whether you are in the fulfillment center or whether you're a CMO, Every single person has stock options. They do. Every single person. Uh, even if you just got uh, kind of promoted to be a full-time picker, you have stock in our company. Oh, I like that. One last thing, a pink tax. I just have to ask you. And, I, and by the way, I have to ask you so you talk about it. Not okay, me. all right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so uh, pink tax is, is basically something that, that we've been uh, attacking over the last kind of six months or so. In America, 34 states tax tampons, pads and fem care products like they're luxury good items. So 34 states, you know, and like guys like us, man, you ask your girlfriend or your wife right. that, hey, next time they ask, ask you to go buy that for them, you're like, listen, babe, luxury good item, you don't need it. Good luck with that, you're yeah. gonna be single very quickly, you know? <laughs> and so if that's the case, right, like they shouldn't be taxed, they're not luxury good items. So totally we agree. rebate the tax back to our consumers if your state taxes you on those A items. A thoughtful warehouse <laughs> club. All right, that's Che Wong. He's the founder and CEO of Box. It is not public, but you can always go there and shop. Stick with Craig. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.